Hello and welcome. I hope you're doing well. Come and get cozy as I share with you some absolutely terrifying encounters. I post new videos every day, so be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, and you'll be notified when new daily content arrives on my channel. All right, let's get right into it. If you have encounters of your own you'd like to share, check out the description box below, where you'll find the email essstorysubmissions at gmail.com, where you can send in your submissions to be read on the channel. You can also send in your fan emails. I love hearing from you guys. In Todd County in Minnesota, I was home from college for a weekend in the spring with my best friend. And since we were looking for a little cash to earn, my parents hired us to clean out the garage of boxes, paper, etc. We decided to get my dad's tractor and hook the wagon up to it, throw the garbage in, and haul it to a burning pile we used to burn brush. And now the contents of the garage. This burn pile is about 200 to 250 yards from the house next to the woods that my parents owned. Next to the woods has always been a farm field, usually grown with alfalfa and around 150 acres. Leading up to the brush pile is long, tall grass with sparse trees here and there with an old barn and an old house nearby, both abandoned. We worked through the afternoon cleaning the garage, getting a sizable load on the wagon until it was overflowing. We decided to finally go down to the pile, dump off what we had, and leave the remaining garbage for another trip once we got the fire going. It was beginning to get dark as my friend and I took the tractor and wagon to the pile unloaded it, and started a very big fire with my parents' permission. Both of us stayed and unloaded the entire trailer and made sure it wasn't going anywhere. I vividly remember that it was dead calm that evening. I asked my friend if he thought one of us should go get the remaining garbage, which was agreed upon, and somehow I was the one to go back with the tractor while he stayed back to tend the fire. I suppose I was gone at most 20 minutes to half an hour and returned. I shut off the tractor and threw a few things on the fire and decided to take a break. As I was standing there next to my friend, I didn't give it much thought, but he was very quiet and seemed almost serious. Suddenly, I heard a sound like someone or something was running around the perimeter of the fire just far enough out of the light of the fire to see any movement. I looked at my friend and said something like, Did you just hear that? He replied, Since you left, I have been hearing very strange noises all around me, and I have been standing as close to the fire as possible. I could see that he was visibly shaking and had definite fear in his eyes. That is when the trees started breaking in the woods, I'm not talking about a twig breaking. It sounded like limbs from the trees were being torn out of the trunks and becoming more and more frequent and increasing in size. At that point, we began hearing the running again. This time, it was multiple things running at the speed that no human could run. At least myself and I was an athlete then. They were heavy sounding. We both looked at each other and didn't want to be there anymore, fire watch or no fire watch. We decided that the only thing to do at this point, just to feel safe, was throw more boxes and stuff on the fire to just keep whatever was messing with us at bay. As we were throwing garbage on the fire, I happened to look up beyond the fire and saw this dark, black figure deftly moving along the perimeter of the woods and suddenly duck back into the woods. At most, a hundred yards away. I said, forget it. Get on the tractor. We're getting at it here. I started the tractor and my friend instinctively grabbed the pitchfork with us, jumped on the wagon, and basically guarded us if something was to attack, which didn't happen. We didn't go back that night. I did return the following morning 
to make sure the fire was out which it was i also went into the woods to see if i could find any tracks but there were so many leaves that i found nothing the fields too had growth on them and were hard packed i purchased the land about eight years ago from my mom and spent a lot of time up there cutting wood and playing around with my kids friends and relatives and every time i drive by the perimeter of the woods i think to myself from the distance that figure had to be seven to eight feet tall maybe taller and quick my friend and i are still best friends and do a lot together and when we're alone we talk about that event occasionally and both of us still get a little rattled about that evening because we still feel like we were intentionally chased out of there possibly because of the fire warmth abandoned buildings to nest in we still ponder those variables when this happened it was so weird that i can't explain these beings were like goblins they intentionally did things by making us think that there isn't something ordinary about this evening they didn't need to attack us to get us to leave just break some branches and run around us however this was enough to paralyze us with fear let's be honest when night falls humans are severely limited in our faculties we can't see in the dark are dependent on light and really cannot function in any remote behavior like these beings it was about 9 p.m i wish i knew what to look for but i looked for branches snapped off trees in the spring after winter there is brush and branches everywhere so i thought something like this was looking for a needle in a haystack i didn't realize these beings can literally twist a small tree trunk so that may have been the case as i have learned that recently there is a woods that fills close to a section nearly 600 plus acres there is a 125 acre lake which feeds a small stream which leads through my property as well as a diverse array of hardwood forests willow scrub meadows farm fields and cattail swamp with the city of long prairie very close on to the next one in becker county in minnesota a hunter was sitting in his pickup truck on a hill at about 6 a.m waiting for deer he heard something moving through the woods about a hundred feet away and saw three stooped two-legged dark figures with round heads walking in a crouched position as if to be stealthy the witness thought they were keeping low to avoid being seen by another hunter who was in the nearby trees one creature was smaller than the other two they walked close together side by side with the smaller one in the middle the trio crossed a grassy field and disappeared into the woods on the other side on to the next one in st louis county in minnesota i was coming home from a sports event and i was going down the road and i looked off to the right of the car and i saw a creature running that was at least seven or nine feet tall it had very shaggy like hair at first i thought that i was seeing things there was a very bad stench in the air it was a smell that i couldn't even describe to you it was running parallel to the side of the car for a few seconds then it veered off into the woods there was no way that it could have been anything else i have never seen anything like it before i stopped the car to see if i could see it again i looked into the woods and it was a human-like creature with long shaggy hair that was abnormally tall it is so hard to describe to put into words i went home and told my parents what i had seen and to this day they don't believe me but my husband does this area was in the country there was a field nearby the trees it is very swampy and there was a lake not even a half mile away we called the lake leaf lake on to the next one this report comes from ohio 
My friend and I were trying to get in some exercise and sightseeing between rainstorms in June. We stopped at the Mount Lafayette viewing area and went on a couple of the trails. The last trail we tried was a bike trail and it dropped steeply. We did not go far as it was slippery in the rain and we did not want to risk the climb back up. I saw three black bodies off to the left but couldn't really make them out. I took three pictures of the area and they were really dark. At the time, I couldn't tell what I was looking at, but I knew something was moving a little. I got nervous that we may have stumbled across some black bears and we decided to leave before anything happened. When I got home, I put the pictures on my computer and played around with the setting and I nearly had a heart attack. They looked like a family of giant gorillas. It's fascinating to see what was watching us, but creepy too. On to the next one. This happened in Morgan County, Indiana. I went to stay the weekend with my best friend Sam at his dad's and grandpa's. His dad lived at the top of the hill and there was a pond behind the trailer. His grandpa lived down at the bottom of the hill. His grandpa used to tell us a story about how he went hiking with his pet dog. One day, he was attacked from behind by a large, hairy creature, and the dog attacked the creature and ran it off. He had scars on his back from the attack that resembled scratches made by a much larger hand. Well, me and Sam were fishing in the pond, we were catching bass and bluegill. Fishing was mine and Sam's world. Well, he thought it would be funny to run to the trailer and lock me out. I was at the back door with my back facing the pond trying to get in. It was all fun and play. Well, I heard a sound behind me. The pond was only 20 yards from the back door and was only as big as a small swimming pool. When I heard a sound like someone walking, I turned around and saw a creature. It was covered in hair and stood between seven and eight feet tall. It was walking the path behind the pond between the pond and the woods. It stopped and looked at me. I immediately started screaming and crying, beating on the door and begging Sam to let me in. I turned back around to see where it was and it was gone. But I could hear something heavy moving very fast through the woods away from me. Sam unlocked the door, asking me what was wrong and why I was so upset and scared. I told him what I saw. He said he believed it because he had seen and heard weird things around there ever since he can remember. Since then, I have been a very big believer in Bigfoot. On to the next one. This encounter is from Pike County in Kentucky. I had just gotten in from raccoon hunting close to my home with a buddy of mine. I'm going to try to relate this evening's event to everyone. We turned our dogs loose, all but one. We had four females, all of them older dogs, none less than four years old. These hounds are what we call finished dogs, meaning they're plenty experienced. The three shot through the country quickly, so after a bit, we drove in their direction. We stopped at a location where my friend has a feeder. We were going to turn his other female loose there and possibly strike a raccoon track. We get out, he gets there, and we walk over to the edge of the timber. She gristles up, he cuts her loose, and she heads straight for the truck and tries to jump in the back, but the tailgate is up, so she crawls under the truck, visibly shaking. He and I both can't believe what she is doing, because you turn her loose, she is gone with one thing on her mind, finding a raccoon. He mumbled a little and leashed her, led her back over. This time, we walked her over to the feeder. I could not believe what I was seeing. He turned her loose, and she about knocked him down, staying up against him. 
There, on that flat, about 70 feet, were good-sized trees and limbs from 12 to 20 feet long, turned upside down, and leaned and wedged in the forks of standing trees, all in front of the feeder for about 70 feet. Then, at the end of the bench, was a teepee structure. I got this feeling of dread and fear. The dog took off again towards the truck. This dog, I've seen fight raccoons, run a bear. She's not scared of cats. All the while, we didn't hear anything or smell anything, but we'd headed back. I also noticed two pine trees, about 18 inches in diameter, pushed till the roots were exposed. No wind or snow did this. This is sheer strength and force. There are tree snaps abundant there, about the eight to nine foot range. We get into the truck. The dog is lying under the truck again. We are both starting to feel a little tense now. We load her up, start to get in the truck, then swoosh pow, a tree falls, pushed or something, about 50 yards back where we just were. We didn't have a phone and we didn't get any pictures, but we're debating whether to go back during the day to get pictures. But I don't know. Whatever it was doesn't want us there. Before I forget, the feeder is a tire nailed to a tree. It was filled with rock instead of feed. It was all gone. The feed was all gone and replaced with rocks. Follow-up report. We went back to the area in daylight and found some partial tracks near a mud puddle. On to the next one. In Sierra County, California, I was on a group father and son fishing trip at Stampede Lake. All the adults were asleep in one tent and all the sons were split up into two more. I was laying awake, I couldn't sleep, listening to everyone else snore. Suddenly, the tent flap was open and about a five foot tall person was standing there looking in. I grabbed my flashlight and shined it into its face. It was a hairy being with not much hair on its black face. We both screamed and woke everybody up. It dropped the tent flap and ran. We heard sounds down by the lake that I still have never heard in 35 plus or more years as an outdoorsman. I cannot call the sound horse-like per se, but that would be the closest thing I could describe it to. Everyone woke up startled and got mad at me thinking I was making it up. I was told I was nuts, crazy, lying, and just about everything else under the sun. Even my own father ridiculed me. I remember vividly the look of surprise on its face. When it screamed with me, I remember seeing its eyes go wide and the white showing as well as the flashlight beam reflecting off a row of perfectly straight teeth in the front. I really cannot say I saw canine teeth, just straight, flat, whitish teeth and gums. The next morning, we walked down to Stampede Lake to fish, and there were two sets of larger tracks that the tracks of the small one seemed to join up with. I was so shamed into being quiet for this for so long, I have told very few people since. I am damn sure I saw a juvenile Bigfoot open my tent, scream, and run off towards his parents' calls for him. On to the next one. I bass fished all the time. One morning, I was fishing on the northwest end on Lake Chodard, and I heard a muffled crash back in the willows. I looked up immediately and saw this large, black, or dark creature, much taller than a grown man hurrying away from me with his head turned looking at me. This has been a long time now, and I never told anyone what I saw until much later. What I saw is firmly indelible in my head. The sighting was, to the best of my memory, about mid-morning on a calm early summer morning, no wind, and I was fishing alone as I commonly did. I hunt and fish a lot so I have a pretty good idea the size of things in the woods. I would say the thing was seven feet tall or more. It was about 80 to 100 yards from me. 
There was no smell other than the smell of willows blooming in the swamp. But one thing stood out. It had a big head. It must have stepped on a limb that snapped, causing me to look up. But that was the only sound it made. It's pretty wet back in the swamp. If you have encounters of your own you'd like to share, check out the description box below, where you'll find the email sstorysubmissions at gmail.com, where you can send in your submissions to be read on the channel. You can also send in your fan emails. I love hearing from you guys. I hope you enjoyed those encounters. And if you did, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. I post new content every single day, so be sure to hit that notification bell and you'll be notified exactly when that new content arrives on my channel. Again, thank you so much, and until next time, bye!